You are now listening to the Oddbelly Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Odd Valley Live. Um, I am your host, Mochi Squeeze, and your other host over there, Jacob Jones. Hi. Um, we are here today at 6.30-ish to drink with you. Um, it is happy we were, hour. We were way more on time today than um, usual, I think. We were way more on time. Um, so, I'm, good time. I feel like my head is shrinking or something. I feel like your head is shrinking. Just because, like, I feel like these earphones are like what they're getting like bigger or something. I don't know. Weird. But anyways, um, let me grab us the shots. Um, yeah. So we are Odd Valley Live. We are a drinking podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why we do it around six thirty because it's still happy hour. That's right. Um, here in Las Vegas. So um. We do want you to drink with us. We talk about stuff. I mean, we do have a topic. We Our topic this week is going to be raves. Mm -hmm. um, just because Vegas just had EDC last weekend. Yeah. Um, so I did my research a little bit on EDC history, but Jacob did his on just raves in general. So I think this will mm -hmm. be a good podcast. So, um, so, oh, so you went yeah. into the EDC specific stuff? Yes. Okay. And cool. then so I found, um, a cool, I found a cool website that has like some some little bookmarks for you too that could probably help. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I didn't do like crazy research. I just did, you know, I mm -hmm. read a wiki. I did. I saw. I went on another website and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Right. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah. I mean, we'll try to get through this like I always tell the viewers like all the time. Quickly. This is a drinking podcast, so we do as we give our facts, they start to get a little blurred because we do start getting really drunk. Blurred facts. Um yeah, so hey. please um please fact check us for sure cuz um some information might not be accurate. I we do we never claim to be the most accurate um mm. hosts. So we only guarantee fun <laughs> and drunkness. That's all we guarantee. Fun, so. fun drunkness from mm -hmm. two fun mm -hmm. drunks. Yep. Ready to get fucking shit faced with you. I hope you're ready to get shit faced with us. Yes. So, um, yeah. you know our topic I already. I see you, singer bro, in the chat. What's mm -hmm. going on, Steven? So, you know our topic already. And um, so every beginning of the podcast we mm -hmm. do a preliminary shot oh, and our preliminary shot Jacob is going to go ahead and pour right there pour, um pour I am drinking Jameson Tam he like filled this up I that one that's fucked up what? like why aren't why isn't yours filled up mine's a double shot uh -huh. I got a full single shot okay well anyways I drink Jameson we usually <laughs> drink Jameson but Jacob has Overport, been dipping sorry. into the Buffalo Trace right now yeah. because he wants to get rid of it even though as you know from the last podcast I usually save the Buffalo Trace for my old fashioned but no it's because we're gonna we're gonna get a fresh bottle of bourbon Mm, yeah, you know I mean? well, yeah. L locked and loaded. Okay, so we're going to do that. It's going to be a good time. Um, good old time. So before we start talking a little bit about our topic, and I, I do have a little bit of housekeeping, let's do our preliminary shot, everybody. Oh, okay. we want to do that first. Yeah, let's do that first. I like your style. Um, so here we go. Cheers. Cheers to everybody out there drinking along with us. Um, let's fucking rave. Yeah. <sighs> So anyways, <laughs> that was a full shot, okay? <laughs> Jacob did that on Woo, purpose. This was pretty full too, man. Like, it just wasn't... Like, look, look, it's Woo. a giant tiki glass, all right? It's like, it's double the size of a shot. All right. Oh, oh that burns too. Woo. Woo. God, okay. we're getting this Friday, like, so, um, going, my friends. A little bit of housekeeping, um... This is a long weekend, so I hope everybody is, whoever is um, off for the holiday. Yeah, happy um, Memorial Day to you. Uh, you know, has fun, you know. You know, thanks to all the people we need to remember. Mm. This is my favorite, like. It's a, it's like a military thing, This right? is my favorite holiday because 
it is like the kickoff to summer basically every time oh, i was yeah, in school point. it was like you know kick off to summer everything's gonna be like fun and yada mm. yada yada um i had this tradition before whenever it was memorial day that um we would do tourist you know day and then we mm-hmm. would walk the strip and get really drunk and take a shot at every single casino um but i'm old now so i don't do that anymore you're also from vegas and i am from vegas now. well but it's because it's yeah. tourist night i even did it when we were here oh. in vegas oh yeah I've, uh-huh. I've, i vividly remember tourist yeah. night that was a good so, time so like really and that, that did start when i moved to vegas like usually uh-huh. memorial day celebration for me when i w- when i lived in california was we would go to vegas and then when i moved to vegas the tradition became that we were doing tourist night because you know we never go to the strip right um, but we're not doing that now because well, I am window. like old and I can't that's handle up. myself. I've never made it back. I've never made it oh. all the way down the strip. The farthest I've gone was Caesars starting from like, you know, Excalibur. So <laughs> there we go. But I got way too drunk. Uh-huh. <coughs> Anyways. So besides that, Summer. I hope everybody's going to have a good weekend. I have an extra long weekend because I did take the Tuesday after the holiday off. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty excited. Um, yeah, I did not do that. He did not do but that. But it's because I have to um, cut a bunch of checks because I'm an accountant. Yeah. And uh, they got to be signed and stuff. So. Yeah. They so. have to. You have to go out like immediately, but I I can't. I just can't. You just can't. <laughs> I got obligations. And um, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if um. Good times. It's still up in the air whether I'm going to be on the podcast next week because um, a what drug was going rep on next week again. Um, one of our drug reps are taking is taking us to actual like happy hour at a bar, um, and usually I do go to those ones just because they pay for everything, drinks, food, even food to go. So I usually bring home Jacob something, and then they are mm-hmm. hosting it at Herbs and Rye this time. Yeah, so I could dope. get another steak for for Jacob like I did last time. Right. And um, so I might not be here if I do do that. But okay. I'm not sure because I have a volunteer thing in the morning on the morning on Saturday morning at like nine. I had to drive all the way to Mount Charleston. So don't you also have a thing going on this Sunday? I do. I have brunch. Oh, it's drag the brunch, brunch thing. That's right. Okay. We're doing drag brunch this Sunday, which I'm pretty excited for. I've never done drag brunch. So I'm like extremely yeah. excited, which reminds me I have to get cash for the drag queens. I'm going to bring $50 in ones. So I got to go to the bank tomorrow. Hell yeah. Um, because I got to get those 50 ones so that I could put them down some drag queens like boobies and stuff. Uh, so you know and i um, i'm limiting uh, myself i feel like 50 dollars is enough right for drag queens or do i have to up it to 100 i mean do i'm not drag really queens sure. have boobs is yeah. that a thing do yeah th- why okay. not why wouldn't they i'm just confused i don't know but tell me everybody who if anyone's listening like you just what the protocol is like should i do should i do 50 is 50 good or should i bring 100 do you just you hand know? the drag queen a dollar no, I think like you stuff it down oh. their stuff or whatever. I'm sorry, or I'm you just toss confused. it at them because know. they dance and stuff. Like I just you don't know. know what the protocol is. Like like if I was at a strip club, I would know the protocol. I just don't know the pro- protocol. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I don't think I'm allowed to slap their asses <laughs> or like slap their titties <laughs> like you would at a strip club. That's but what I mean. But they do yeah. like just different protocol. You know, yeah, they He's do. He's saying prof- same pretty much, so I don't know. Do we slap their butts? No, no, no. Let's not get off track, all right? Okay. This is an episode about okay. raves. Yes, this is why our raves. fucking okay. podcast is two hours long, all right? We okay. need to get yes. on So topic. let's get on topic. So we are going to talk about raves because um, if you guys know me and Jacob personally, mm-hmm. um, Jacob likes electronic music. And then I uh, yeah. do like electronic music. I have a been to DJ, a couple raves. DJ and producer. You know, so... We're into the rave stuff. We we do. You can call like me a raver. Rave I, I'm a well. I'm not. I don't really rave right now, but former raver, I guess. I but I'm still. You're think, always a raver. I don't think you could call me a raver. I'm like an occasional raver, seasonal could, raver. Could I do my housekeeping really quick? Yeah, and that's it for my housekeeping. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to. I just need to tell the people that 
if you want to watch this show live, you totally can. You can go to twitch.tv slash Odd Valley uh, on Friday nights, 6.30, starting at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, come join us live. Get in the chat. We'll talk to you. We'll interact. We'll read some of your uh, comments and, and fun stuff. If you all do want to watch this later, check us out on YouTube. Uh, just just search Odd Valley. Please subscribe on there so we can get a better URL. But for now, I'm just saying search Odd Valley, two words. Uh, and if you want to listen to the audio version of the podcast, you can find us on podcast services. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything from Spotify to Apple uh, Apple Podcasts. Just, again, search Odd Valley and you'll find us. You might find an old image on Apple Podcasts because they don't really play nice with SoundCloud. But I digress. Thank you very much. And let's get back into EDC, ravey, funny, fun puns. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're going <laughs> to do that. I don't know, guys. I've had kind of a, a long week, you know? I've, I've had some, some days where I've been really tired, and I feel kind of drained. But it's all good. I'm here. I'm ready to kick it up a notch. You know what I got today, Mochi Squeeze? Mm-hmm. I got iced coffee from a 7-Eleven this morning. Okay. It wasn't that Why? bad. It wasn't that bad. But it's it's the caffeine's worn off. But anyway... Good times, man. I've been listening to dance music all day. Like Mochi Squeeze said, uh, mm-hmm. we're we're into dance music, EDM, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Um, and Jacob likes house, you know, house music. So look, I know. I am deep into the whole EDM scene. Like you know, my okay, S- just quick quick story. Uh, the first, I mean, I'm 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 like, I was born in '86, which makes me a '90s kid, basically, right? Because like. That's what I remember. That's what I grew up in was the I 90s. I think we're all 90s kids. No, I know that. But I'm just saying the 90s was very electronic, you know, in uh, a lot of ways. Not really. It's, well, specifically house music. How, there was a ton of house music in the 90s. Like, you don't really think about it, but honestly, think about I'm blue, da boo dee da boo da yeah, That's yeah, house music. Yeah, Alice okay. DJ, better off alone. Yes, yeah, okay. Huge, right? You can even go like even earlier into you know just you name it there's a whole bunch of songs back in back in the 90s so like yes house music was big in the 90s uh not s- it's not exactly the same type of ha- house music we have these days mm-hmm. um but i equate my love for electronic music for two two reasons number one i'm a gamer right so i've always liked electronic Wait, are we music. getting into the topic because we didn't do the wheel yeah well yeah i'm just just quick i'm just saying something quick Okay, because like, what if video we say game, the word video games, electronic music, right? Okay. It, it's already electronic. Because what Always if we say it. the word number two, uh, the Mortal Kombat soundtrack? Okay. If you ever seen the first movie from the nineties, Mortal Com- Kombat soundtrack, I had that fucking. See, we would have already drank a bunch of times. All right, let's yeah, let's take a I step back. You. Let's take a step back. Well, you started talking about the topic before I even got into the housekeeping. So we're no, so you, I was okay. going back around. Because I was to waiting it. for you to do the housekeeping, and then I was going to introduce the wheel. You didn't wait at all. You just started talking. But you're the host, so, so tell us about the wheel. <laughs> so are you? But are you done with your housekeeping? I've been done. Okay, so I started talking about Mortal Kombat. That's yeah, way past so the house, before the we before we start with the topic because you know jacob has probably said 20 million beep, words beep, that we could have drank beep, beep, to already. fuck that all right fine i'll drink some more but of this. so we have a wheel here for first time listeners our wheel is called trebek i, I like to call him the wheel of misfortune mm-hmm. he is um a wheel full of words <laughs> we spin it twice and whatever word it lands on we anytime we say it throughout the podcast mm-hmm. we have to drink so, you know, we drink, you drink, we all drink. Yep. That is the plan. Yeah. And you need to drink along. Yeah. We hope that you drink along with us because it definitely is like more fun if you do. If mm-hmm. you don't and you could, you know, if you don't, it's still OK. But I feel like it's better when you drink with us, to be honest. It's not cool to um, not drink with us. And unless everyone drink if you are of age yeah, in your own you country. Thank you. Because it's different. Thank you much. Everywhere. That's what I was so, about to say. So, you know, yeah. we don't condone underage drinking. Do not drink if you are not allowed to. But if you are, fucking welcome to the show and let's get started. We're yes. going to spin this bitch twice. And I'm yes. sorry for calling you a bitch, Trebek. My bad. 
That's yeah. my bad. So um, Jacob's going to read the words. Smaller, so Jacob's going to read the words, and he's going to spin it because the wheel is closer to him. And All then right. um, Words of the week. Okay. We always have Here drink, drink, drunk. Mm, was that bad? Rave. Festival. EDC. Clearly. Candy. With a K. EDM or genre. So essentially, if we mention why would we music, say? I can't believe you put like if we mention any type genre, of music. Yes, basically if we say house, dubstep, whatever. That's what I mean. So that that's a big one, right? Uh, light, just the word light. DJ, crowd, fuck, uh, and then a date or year. Okay. Is said of any kind. All right. You so should have just changed date or year with drugs. No, I don't want to put drugs on here. Why? I don't know. Because drugs is like totally I mean, a it's major part of it, but I was trying to not glamorize the drugs part. Uh, but we are Even all for big, drugs. Nah, that's a good point. Um, I don't know why you're fine. trying to pretend like our our podcast isn't like. No, I know. I'm just saying. I don't know, man. All right. This one will be drugs then because fuck crowd. Okay. Wait, what? Is it? Did the, <laughs> the action cam's not moving anymore. That's okay. Fuck it. They know what it looks like. Spin it. Yeah. No, you guys aren't getting action cam this time. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to spin it twice. Let's go. You're just going to have to trust us for what it landed on. Drugs is the blank one. All right. We have EDM or genre or basically any kind of music. I'm going to get. Here's the next one. Drugs. Gonna get fucked. We're going to get fucked up tonight. I have a feeling. Well, I can't get too fucked up. We got stuff to do tomorrow. And EDC. Okay. EDM and EDC. <laughs> and I don't have the bell. Molly. Okay, well, that's some bullshit. Well, that's how you know who's That's some bullshit. You know what? You're, f- you know, <laughs> you're being kind of rude, and I don't appreciate it. All right. Uh, what's happening here? What's going on here? Wait, well, what happened? You moved it because you went to get the bell, and now I moved what? The curtain, the green screen. Why did it move? What? You just have to fix it. Push it forward. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Did I fix it? I mean, yeah. All right, it's fixed. This is this is this is Odd Valley Live. It's a live show. We do not edit things out. You have to deal. You with should it. like Fucking drink every time it. he says that during the podcast. Because, like, I feel like he says that so many times. This is a live it's, show, everybody. It's whenever things, things mess will. up. I need to tell people. It's a that. live that's show, why I, everybody. That's why I put live on there. It's a God live it. show, everybody. It's like, it, I yeah, swear that's my he given. says it so many that's times. That's like that's one of the things fucking I say. Phrase. That's, I'm the producer, we Dungeon Master. Like, you know what I mean? And also, this is a, I felt like this is a good rave hat. I'm also wearing <laughs> my super bright rave, gri- like, you know, a gorilla's shirt that would be perfect to wear for tour rave. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. He did. He, from Friday night live. Okay. Anyway. No. He's like always <laughs> I, saying it. I see Steven out there. Thanks for hanging out with us, buddy. Uh, so what are the two words? Mochi squeeze starting it now. Starting EDC na- and EDM. Or I could have said house. Yeah. All those. So I typed them in the chat and we're good to go. Okay. Just real quick before you start talking. I'll be, I'm really upset because I was cleaning today because I had a day off and I scratched my nail. And really? Look, so now there's, you can't really see it, but there's and now a scratch. You just got it done. Yeah, you just, I just got, got those got nails done. done. I thought it was just a mark, but I think it's scratched. I'm sorry. I'm stuff. really sorry this happened to you. I'm really sorry. But it's so, okay. Uh, okay. So while we talk, I was thinking what I could do is put some of my old, some of my old music in the background. Yeah. Why so not? I'll, yeah. Let's do it. Always. Yes, yeah, Stephen. It is such a shame. God, it was perfect. <clears throat> but I scratched. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's okay though. Well, Mochi. So um, you're the host of the of the show. So we're gonna start talking. So, let's so get we'll into talk it. about the. We're gonna get into the topic now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now's so, the time. Now's the time. So the time Jacob to- was talking about how he first uh, his first love with electronic music. Yeah, video games. Uh, specifically Mega Man. Mega Man Two has some boppers in there, right? Uh, but then you know, just it's the slow burn of just listening to chip tunes. 
if you know what that is you know what that is it's basically like uh it's the it's a, it's like the really digital really uh simple like almost regular nintendo music mm-hmm, it's the mm-hmm, regular mm-hmm, nintendo mm-hmm, music mm-hmm. like mario think about the original mario from but the 80s would you call that electronic music um <coughs> Tech technically, I mean technically, it is. It, it's an it's it's like a synthesizer. A synthesizer is electronic, right? So like, yeah, it's not exactly. I mean, you want to like dance to it or whatever. But don't they but I'm use just saying like, in like eighties music? Well, of course, but that's but that's my point is that okay? Like, see, so do we drink for eighties music? Uh, I said genre. So okay. we did say that we said electric electronic music like four times. So we probably should drink for that. So just hit the bell four times. All right, there you go. Okay. All I'm trying to say is that it was like it was like a gateway. Like my brain was fertile for dance music. So by the time I really like, I got a full punch to the face dose of it when I watched the Mortal Kombat uh, movie that came out in the '90s. Cause like I love that movie and I thought the music was kind of cool. Like you know the song goes like Mortal Kombat. Is that electronic music? That's a house song. Cause it goes like the whole time. You know what I mean? So there you go. I did a cheerleading routine to that. Yeah, a lot of fucking cheerleaders did. Did their routines mm-hmm. to dance music straight up? Yeah. Cheers. Um. <laughs> Bell. Uh, and so like that's kind of what started my love for it because I listened to that cassette tape on repeat. Like I just listened to it over and over and over again. And uh, oh, Sandstorm. Steven says Sandstorm. You know, you know how Sandstorm goes. I do, but I'm not going to sing it. Chicka chicka chit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My first song. <laughs> I I feel like so. I'm gonna say this song was my first song that introduced me to um. Uh. Uh-huh. To the electronic music, but I don't think it, I can't think of my real first song. I could hear it in my mind, and I remember that uh-huh. I had the CD and I left it at school. And then someone stole it, but I can't remember the song. That's the problem. Uh-huh. So the song. The so can you like song, comment or something? No, no. Uh, S- Singer Bro says Zombie Nation, Current Craft, another uh, epic UK song, one that goes. Oh, I do know that song. Yeah, see, everyone fucking. Yeah. Knows these so songs. the second song that I could remember <laughs> that would intru- that did really big time introduce me to um, big time that music was probably the Alice DJ song. Oh yeah, uh, how's that one go? Fuck. I mean, I know that I'm trying to remember the melody part. You were singing it earlier. No, I know. Better off alone, but then it goes. Oh yeah, do 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 that one yeah so there you go you're welcome guys i hope you like my uh my fucking beatbox dance and then like i don't think i got into electronic music until um until again until probably 2010 or something i mean yeah, I, I did go through a hard rave <laughs> phase for a minute, like where I really uh-huh. was into that type of music. Yeah. And then like what? I went to a rave and then I didn't go and then I just didn't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, well. and then like and then I felt like <laughs> I think the next uh, rave I went to after that one rave that I went to yeah. was EDC. Okay. Was that one of the words? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Well. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> um so uh so like my whole my whole journey with it is that like I always like music and stuff. I learned how to play guitar in middle school. You know what I mean? And then it wasn't until about high school that like a friend of mine introduced me to to some like software. I think it was called Oh my god. Techno 
something. It was like a techno VJ or EJ or mm-hmm. something like that. I can't remember, but it was like essentially was pattern based um, sampling software where you can take like loops like it, had, it would have a bunch of loops, but you could take loops, put it on like a timeline and then essentially make s- a song out of the loops that they had uh, yeah. in there, which is how I started. And then I realized that they have actual synthesizers in there, too. And so then I started mm. making my own beats like with my own like parts. And then I got into Fruity Loops, mm-hmm. which now people know as FL Studio. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Yeah, it was like a really rudimental, rudi- rudimental FL Studio. But then I got into FL Studio, started messing with, around with that. And then I heard uh, about Ableton. And so I got my hands on Ableton and uh, spent a bunch of time figuring out how to use that. And then that's when I was really producing like a ton of music and getting into DJing. And, and uh, we were throwing big, like, you know, basically rave parties. Mm-hmm. Where I'd be like DJing, but then I'd be playing my own music and spend a bunch of time into that. So that's kind of like what really like got me deep into that ecosystem. Jesus, I'm burping. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ableton can be complex, but I like the flow of it. It makes it simpler. <laughs> okay. So. But that's sort of my journey with with dance music. And then my rave journey is uh, like, you know, I had an ex-girlfriend who was kind of into the rave scene and kind of brought me in. So when did you go to your, what age were you when you went to your first rave? Uh, I mean, I was like in my twenties. Oh, you were in your twenties. So I was probably 23, 23, 22, 23, maybe something like that. And, uh, like I, I don't really remember exactly. Was Um, it EDC or was it like a random rave? See, that's the thing that I'm trying to remember um, because, like, so we would throw parties a lot, you know, and, like, I would DJ at these parties, and we would go to other people's parties, and these are just at people's houses, and then there would be, like, DJs there, you know, so it's, like, really, would you like... qualify that as a rave? I feel it's like kind of like, no, hold on. I'm just, What I'm trying to say is that, like, it kind of, it got us into the rhythm of like okay we want to go to like a rave rave you know what i mean okay. and we would call them okay. massives and the thing is like yes we went to raves but i think it was afterward it's just hard to remember because it was kind of a crazy time you know uh, okay. all the you know all the drugs and shit but <laughs> okay uh but i if i'm i'm pretty sure that it was edc the last year was in uh uh la okay or whatever um, I, I can't remember the year exactly. I think it was like 2010, 2011 or something. No, I think it was twenty. I think it was t- when I was doing my research. I want to say that it was like 2010 because mm-hmm. 2011 was the first year that it was in Las Vegas. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, so it was, tw- it was 2010, um, but it was Cascade. Uh, it was like. Yeah, it was Cascade and Dead Mouse were like the two main headliners that day. Yeah, there I were did. Some other I people. did the bell for EDC because that is. Well, the you word. just fucking said it again. Damn I need it. another beer. Well, that's just a singer, bro. Give, give me another beer. To do that. Give me another that. beer. But after that, it was it was over. Like you know, we we went to the smaller yeah. events here and there, and then I I was DJing as much as I possibly could. And then I started DJing, like, smaller events and stuff, which is pretty fun. Uh, but, you know, Raven's great. This wow. I actually went to, I think, Mandalay Bay once mm-hmm. to a rave. And, like, there was some okay. notice. There were some notable people there. Okay. You know? But, man, Raven's fun. It's great. But yeah. anyway, let's get into raving. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, but you know, I need to download something. So yeah. So mine was when I was in. Uh, my first rave was when I was. I was eighteen. Uh huh. I was still in high school, but um. I don't remember. I feel like I can't remember what it was. I feel right. like it was um. I feel like it was autistic. Uh-huh. So it was oh, like yeah. a rave slash hip hop thing. Yep. I so remember they that. had hip hop rooms and they had h- rave rooms. 
Um, what? Oh, because you said hip-hop. Because I said... <laughs> Why did you say that again? Because that's a genre. So, um, so I did go to that. Um, and it was cool. I can barely remember the music. I remember that's the first time I did ecstasy. <clears throat> um, I yeah, did but not really though. No, it was ecstasy. It just wasn't Molly. No, I'm sure it wasn't ecstasy. It was just like aspirin cut with what something. Isn't that what ecstasy is? It's no, there like should just... be some kind of MDMA in there. Okay. I, I feel like you'd never even had even. I don't. I, We've had this discussion where, before where, like, I feel like you probably, like, like d- <laughs> will you will you tell me, will you tell the people? I feel like it was ecstasy, but I probably didn't take enough. Because when I well, did what it. what happened? Okay, when I did it, I took a half of a half. Half of a half? Yeah, I took a half of a half because I was too scared. That's, because okay. everybody was like, oh, um, it might be, it might like it's gonna make you feel weird and and you know you gotta be careful so my friend was like why don't you just do half of half so Mm -hmm. so he took he took the half and then me and um me and the other person that was there Mm -hmm. took the uh, split the half in half and um, right and i didn't feel anything but i think that was because it was a half of a half Right. But it yeah. was ecstasy, so okay. I don't know. Um, I remember it being like a weird shape, you know, uh-huh. and then he like cut it, and it was like a weird color. I think it was like pink or something. Okay, I, I can't remember. And then my friend that took the half of half was rolling hard, and then my friend that had the half was like okay. So then I was like, I don't know, maybe it's because he took, he's used to taking ecstasy. I don't know. And then so um, okay. the whole night, well, I just remember dancing the whole, whole entire night and not being tired at all. But that's because I yeah. was probably like. No, maybe you were rolling a little bit because that's kind of what happens. Yeah. And then like, um, yeah. And then I remember like us like laying down in like a circle and we were all like massaging each other. Yeah. And then like. And then we laid down, and I mean, nothing freaky happened, but you know. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't. But that's what I'm saying is like you didn't really like roll. roll. Yeah, no, I don't. You know I don't mean? feel like I really rolled, but I feel like you know. So you did kind of experience it. But though. but I don't know because I was I was just assuming that I could dance all night because I was 18. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm a teenager, so like I yeah, get, I had like better. way more energy, you know. Right. Um, and I remember it being really hot. But then yeah. I feel like yep. that's that makes just sense. like how it is. Uh, I don't you're know. You're totally right. You're totally right. That's that's roll. I mean, you you probably did roll. So <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> like bit. the second time you know I, mean? I did uh, the second time when we went to EDC, uh-huh. um, we had like I ah, that's the word. I think it was it was ecstasy again because it was shaped like the blue ghost from Pac Man. <sighs> Yeah, no, that okay. Yeah, so yeah, ecstasy always was like it was like a pill the size of an aspirin, mm-hmm. maybe a little smaller, um, and it always had some kind of image on there. I remember like back in the day, it was like the Puma symbol ones were like dope, mm-hmm. and then eventually there was the ones where it was like a Pokeball on uh-huh. one side and then something else on the other. And I remember uh, one of them was like a Rhino Pokeball, Ooh. and that was crazy. And one was like. Uh, a Batman symbol, Pokeball, and that was crazy. Yeah. Oh man, all sorts of crazy like pills and yeah. Shit, but so you know? that's but why that was, it was like was it was shaped ago. like a and it was our ago. friend, our friend from LA. Um, Don't out him. You know, I know I'm not. It came, <laughs> and then he because that was his first rave, uh-huh. so he was like, oh, I want to do, I want to do ecstasy, and then my right. um. The person I was with at that time also was like, it, I want to do rate? ecstasy, too, because I've never done ecstasy. And they say it opens your mind to a whole bunch of stuff, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so he came down with the whole like baggie full of those blue ghost things. Oh, and then ghosts, yeah. um, nice. and then we went to EDC and uh-huh. we each had one. I had a whole one. But then I felt like I didn't feel like how. 
I mean, I was able to dance. I danced all night until dawn. Right. Okay. Um, and this is in my 20s. So, like, I danced all night until I, until dawn. And, like, um, I was also mm. really hot. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, always hot. That's part of it. That's for sure part of it. Um, But I never, like, but that's it. Like, so if I was supposed to experience something else, like, that's all the experience that I had with it. Mm. But that's it. That's my whole thing with ecstasy. No Molly. I've never tried Molly. Yeah, Molly's legit. But that's the thing. Like, um, pff, these parties that we threw were crazy. You know what I mean? That, that's all I'll really say. But, like, that's... Okay, so that's the thing. Like, okay, you go to a rave. What is a rave? So, I titled the episode Raves and Massives for a reason. Because back in the day, there was there were three different types of raves, right? There was rollbacks, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's a kickback, but everyone's rolling. Okay, is this, like... Because I did some research on raves, too. They said that raves started in the UK in the 80s. Yes, that's correct. The UK in the 80s. It didn't come to America until... Yeah, early the, 90s. Yeah, early 90s. Yes. And the DJs that brought it here to America was like... Um, yeah, like Pete Tong and shit. Was... Uh, no, it's people... Well, yes, but I had the... I forgot Do the you name. Ha- now okay, well, drunk. find your research okay, and on. then talk about it in a sec. Okay, you go. Rollbacks kickback where people are doing ecstasy right uh then a rave which is a smaller underground event right which back in the 90s was literally illegally in a warehouse that was not sanctioned or anything like that uh and then there were the massive raves which we just all called massives and that's what that's edc that's what we call now a festival a festival is oh yeah um huge you like hash hit the, hit the bell please you like hash will know. She was a big raver back then. But th- she was a big raver back then. Yeah, the best feeling so was being know. right up in the speakers. The mm-hmm. drum and bass room was intense. Fuck yeah, drum and bass. Love drum and bass. Bass hitting and like every molecule in your body was affected. Yeah, I could feel it from my brain into my fucking But toes. I also feel like my that l- wasn't like a hop toes. skipping away for, for people. Because if you were uh, also like into like the hippie culture, you would definitely be into the rave culture. Well, yeah, it's it's obviously like, you know, like they're right next to each other. It's it's, it's yeah. almost like the same crowd. Yeah. It's like the raver culture is the young crowd and the hippie culture is the ravers who grew up and kept like progressing hippie. into hippie, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I digress. So like that was like the three, you know, sizes of raving. And even to this day, it's sort of like that, where it's like most like you have local quote unquote underground raids which is just like smaller events where you know local DJs are just doing their own thing which is yeah. the type of shit that I would actually play I would DJ um, and then like big festivals which is you know EDC Life is Beautiful this is music you did? yeah oh yeah oh, was, by the way we're listening to OM Jesus music this is old 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 ass yeah. music I made like this song is from 2014 or Jacob something. Jacob used to do this stuff. He doesn't do it anymore. Don't know why. I want to start doing it again. He has his whole room for it. I mean, it's for podcasting, too. Yeah. You can't even hear it. I'm going to turn it up. Yeah, you can turn it up a little bit. Um, tell us if you could hear it. See, I don't want it to be too loud. Jacob is a really good. This is pr- bad. Like cat. he makes this song's really called bad good, cat. good music. Okay, Dude, some of my okay. So um, and he doesn't do it anymore. I don't know why. There's a, um, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it, but I, we'll get into that as we get. Drunker. And also, like you know, I, I just always encourage because me, I'm a, I like electronic music that has words to it. No, um, I so see. I like I always I always hope that Jacob could make one with words, but then the ones that don't have words are like really good still, you know. Well, thank you. But he doesn't make music anymore. I I mean you know I c- I could always jump back in there, but we're, anyway, look what I was thinking. This is kind of off topic. I was thinking of doing like a DJ set where I just play like every old track I've made that I still have 
and just just to see what people think because ah. like you know I, I know a lot of people now that I didn't before uh, but I want to I want to get back to make music but the cool thing like I, I've, I always did all my own sound design and stuff you know what I mean which it's not like perfect but uh, I, I definitely prided myself myself on that which is a great time but like getting back to sort of the topic like the reason why I get into this stuff and get inspired is because you go to like the rave and you watch like mm -hmm. the DJ that you idolize. Like my first big thing, right, was that 2010. Sorry, I have to say it, EDC, um, and it was very influential on me and like my aspirations. Like you know, I was like at the time I was a huge fucking Dead Mouse fan, and even now I s always love Dead Mouse, even if he's like a dick. Um, but uh, but is he a dick or is he just like really? Uh, everyone's into a dick. Like I'm a dick too. But <laughs> that's why I feel like it's all whatever, you guys you know that I mean? are like let's cancel everyone, right? But um, no. But honestly, like Dead Mouse killed it, and it was like hugely in influential. And when you listen to especially this song, it's very Dead Mousey. But even Cascade, like watching Cascade was like huge for me. But I also I think Dirty South was there, and that was like fucking like awesome progressive house like house music stuff and fuck i said it twice hit the bell twice we probably would have run into each other that first year that i went to edc here and we just didn't even know it well we were both there um we were both there that day honestly and you you were <laughs> when they had the cards you had the yeah. it was just the card yeah it was the card you had to load the money on there yeah it was the card but that was the thing is like Man, I had like I don't know. Raving is fun. And by the way, that Raving's ticket, r that like, EDC's tickets are like, uh, before when we first got it, it, I only paid like, I want to say a hundred dollars for it. Now it's like fucking. Oh yeah, it's way. I don't know. Back it's like four hundred dollars. Some fuck. Yeah, no, it's insane. But it's because every like it's also gotten a lot bigger over the years. <laughs> specifically, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the very cool first beat. time it was like, you know. But anyways, okay, I found my research that said that the DJs that brought it to America was Paul Oakenfold and Nick yeah. Holloway and Paul Danny Oakenfold Rampling. Fucking huge. I don't know who Danny Rampling is. Not exactly sure who those people are either. But that's what it said. But I uh, do know who Paul Oakenfold is. You know all about Oakenfold. Well, that's all that fucking matters, isn't it? But, yeah, so, um, but that how raves came to america and they were really small and then um the police started getting really upset about all the drugs and stuff so then the war because well, of the war on drugs happened and then they were like okay like let's break up all these raves and then so the raves had to go underground right true but at the same time like you know some people died and stuff and you know whatever that kind of ruined things for people i mean yeah because like i feel like when you're doing drugs and you have to do it like under the cover of night and like no one needs to know or something like, of course, people are going to overdose because right. they're not going to know how to do drugs safely. I mean, not that I'm, you know, saying people should always do drugs. <laughs> I'm just saying like, you know, um, I think that if it was um, if people knew how to test their drugs and stuff, they wouldn't overdose right or i mean you know kill themselves yeah no i mean some i don't people know why i rang the bell did i did we say a word no i don't know you're just hitting the bell because you're spiraling <laughs> it's spiraling um no it's because like look man stay safe out there hydrate don't just trust random people don't just take as many like you know pills as people say or whatever when you're at these events See, because, like, I mean, I'm only scared of doing drugs because I'm a control freak. So I hate not being in control over myself. So mm. um, that's why I'm, like, just really iffy about drugs. But that is, we can't lie that that is a main, pro that is one of the biggest proponents of, of the rave scene, like, is drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, I mean, you know. I mean, not all drugs. Like, just, like, I feel like it's just mainly MDMA. Look, man. That's the thing about it, though. It's like the music, like you can still enjoy it sober. Yeah, no, you That's can. That's why, you know, but like going to a rave and doing drugs is fun. Yeah, no, you can. I'm like just I saying. can't lie. 
So I it's lie. funny because like I told my I told my um coworker because she was interested she she wanted to know like about EDC. Um and right. uh, she's really weird about like seeing people like do drugs, right? Um but she's like so she was scared that she would see people like um be acting all weird because of like you know how people act like when they're on heroin or something or like shooting up on heroin and oh, i'm like no, no that is no, not people aren't dying in the streets no i was like any, that is you know. not how edc is like it's like people that are doing <sighs> the drugs that they're doing at edc are like you know rich people drugs or something like it's not like anything like that like sometimes you can't even tell if someone's rolling unless you're in a, you're in the crowd and you're seeing them and you're like looking them in the eye or like, you know, but no one's like fucking passing out or punching or scratching their faces off. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's not like that. It's <laughs> God damn it. There's so much going on with this conversation. And it's like it's like fucking flying at the speed of light. Can we back up a little? Let's talk a little bit about raves. Just like what a rave is and what what is classified as. How about that? Yes. Okay. Let's take a step back. Wait, and we're we... We've been talking about our own experiences and all that okay, stuff. And we've been talking okay. about a lot about drugs. Let's back it up and talk a little bit about what the justice.gov website put out. Uh, April 2001 put out this. This is fucking real. The justice.gov website. So this is like a government website. They put out a report on raves mm-hmm. in April 2001. So I just want to read some of this. Uh it tripped me out that I found this. Um, so they're saying, what? What's a? What is a rape? What are rapes? What does the government classify a rape? High energy all night dance parties and clubs known as known as raves, which feature dance music with a fast pounding beat and choreographed laser programs, have become increasingly popular over the last decade, and particularly among teenagers and young adults, beginning as an underground movement in Europe. Raves had evolved into a highly organized, commercialized, worldwide party culture. Uh, rave parties and clubs are now found throughout the U.S. and in countries around the world. This is all true. Mm-hmm. Even even now, raves are held either in permanent dance clubs or at temporary venues set up for a single weekend event in abandoned warehouses, open fields, or empty buildings. And you could also say, like, well, actually, raves are uh, they're also at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. <laughs> yeah, but that's <laughs> Which like it's it's really exploded since two thousand one. It really right? has. It it's really crazy has. To think about. I I think that like rave scene has like evolved. Right. Um, a lot, and yeah, it's pretty insane, dude. I think that like it's because everyone first loved the. Okay, like let's talk about the theme. The main theme of raves is the plur, right? Like that's the, what the culture is. Like, you know. Yeah, peace, love, peace, love, unity, unity respect. Yeah, and respect. Right. So everyone really loved that and wanted to spread that. And I right. really do think that that is it. that's what drew people in. So people right. like like you know, you went there and they felt like it was a community. Everybody, there was no judgment. It didn't matter how you look, I'm how you talked. I'm going to put how, some rave backgrounds on You know now. what I mean? Yeah. And people respected each other. But I do think in a way that that evolved. And I don't think the plural culture like, goes with raves now. At all. So No, now it's become bro now culture. Now it's become bro culture. But that's <laughs> cool. Um, we So you just got to find the real people well, that are still here's the that. thing, man. Raves were like a very underground movement. Even like a lot of hip-hop stuff. Yeah, was, and then when it goes right? mainstream, people bastardize it. That's what happens. That's what happens to literally everything. Like, yeah. Like, Any, everything. For real. Ju- look, here's the thing. You got to hit everything the bell. You got to hit the bell, by the way. Is ruined by. You could say. You could. You could pause it that, or you could say everything good will eventually be discovered by the masses, and, and they'll ruin they'll, it. They'll love it, and the problem with crowds of people is that now it's gone from a small group of people. It's gone who viral. Are cool. Well, it's gone from a small group of people who are cool to the masses, which is a lot of people. And when you have like a lot I can of pick people, there's some, some bros people. from the picture right there. That guy in the sunglasses is probably a bro, and he's trying to rape girls. And that guy over there is like, you know. Whoa, man, relax. It's just a guy. It's just Could a guy be. in a picture. You don't Could fucking be. know. Could be. 
No, oh, what no. I'm tr- what I'm trying you. to say is that you, eyes. you should just chill. Okay, I know that there's a lot of people out there, and not all of them are good. And it's you know it's probably true that most of them aren't good. But I'm just saying you can't just start pointing at people in a picture and calling them dirt bags when you don't even know who they are. Yeah, but that's okay. That's why I couldn't do that because I don't know who they are and they don't. That's know not me. very plur of you, Mochi. You're adding to the issue. But if I was there, I wouldn't <laughs> say that to him. I would totally give but him a hug. you'd be thinking it. I would be thinking it, but I wouldn't yeah. like be an asshole to him. So according to to Wikipedia, this uh, raves are associated. Uh, with the early 90s music uh, scene, when DJs played at illegal events in musical styles dominated by electronic dance music from a wide variety of subgenres, including techno, hardcore, house, and alternative dance. So those were the genres back then, but they also they didn't put drum and bass in there. So that was five genres, so you need to hit the bell five times. And you need to hand me another beer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Occasionally, live musicians have been known to perform at raves. In addition to other types of performances, artists such as go-go dancers. That's let's not for lest we forget the go-go's and but fire okay, dancers. Like, fire dancers they do go there, but that's more of a hippie thing. But anyway, the music is amplified with a large, powerful sound reinforcement system. So yeah, dope ass sound systems. Typically with large subwoofers, uh, walls of them, by the way, to produce a deep bass sound. The music is often accompanied by laser light shows, uh, projected colored images. That's not true anymore. It's basically giant screens. Uh, visual effects, I guess that's what I'm talking about, but we could say there's a lot of lights everywhere. And fog machines, which is absolutely true because you need the uh, lasers to come through. I feel like did. I wonder, did Eli Cash go with me? Eli Cash, if you're still in chat, did you go with me to Audiotistic? And we just separated? I feel like maybe. I don't really remember anymore. I do remember what I was wearing. I always remember what I'm wearing. Really? Yeah, I was wearing a halter, a crop top, and big baggy pants. Fuck yeah. That's what I was wearing. Gangsta, now I have a... Uh... And I remember I was with my friend Johnny... And he d- he always likes to take his shirt off, so he was shirtless with just jeans. Dude, shirtless. And then he being took, shirtless at a rave is part of it. Yeah, and then he took us to we like when we left. He took us to like Denny's because we were really hungry, and I had gum all over my arm, and I don't know how that happened. Oh, we got uh, we got the homie back. What's up? Yeah, so you know, but it Sorry, was fun. We, we disconnected there for a sec. Yeah, see, we like, I, and I remember the Denny's that we went to, too. And I remember my ears so blasted out like I could not hear, you know, like when you go to really loud concert and stuff. Like when you go to really loud raves. Um, but it was really, but it was a fun time. I really had a fun time. See, look at that. Yeah, fun times. So I'm just going to put footage from old ass And I think that the people gave me light shows, too, that were really cool. But I don't think we had the fun gloves. I think it no, was the just gloves, like glow sticks. The gloves didn't come in until like 2005 or 2008. Yeah, it was just 2010. glow sticks that they did. Um, yeah. Glow well, sticks in between someone's fingers. and nah, gl- Glow sticks were the thing. You, d- yeah. you always had glow sticks. You might have uh, fire poi. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was a thing. But I don't ever remember. You know how they exchange. There's like this whole ritual on how to exchange candy. Like I, that wasn't That's a plur. thing. That wasn't a thing back then, though. Like we just yeah exchanged candy, you know. Like we were just like, oh my god, yeah, I yeah. think that's so cute. And then like we we like we're like here, friends forever or whatever, <laughs> rave friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> it, like was was what happened. So, and we did have pacifiers. They like they like said no more pacifiers after that because you know. Well, the whole okay. So you thing. know what the point of the pacifier is. Yes, because, like, you, like, grind your teeth or whatever when you're on. Um, or you might bite your yeah, fucking tongue. Yeah, you might tongue bite your or tongue. Or the inside of yeah. your mouth. So, yeah. essentially, when, if you do, like, if you do ecstasy or you do molly or whatever, like, essentially, it makes you want to, like, it, it makes you essentially grit your teeth. Like, you're always, like, clenching your jaws. Uh, so, you're, like, chewing and chewing all night. So, you're either grinding your teeth or you're chewing on yourself. 
your tongue, yeah. your yeah. fuck, you know. So like the next day, you're like, holy shit, my mouth is chewed up. So then you know, you want to chew gum, right? Or you put a pacifier in your oh, mouth. Oh, maybe that's why I had gum all over my arm. Yeah, because gum. Yeah, you uh, chew gum, right? It helps. Okay. Or you put it, you know, you put a passy in your mouth like you're a baby, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that helps. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a little bit of a, uh, it's a little bit of it. But oh, you. there she she has she has a pacifier. Yeah, of course, that chick's rolling. She's rolling. Foot. Yeah, balls. you need to be drinking okay. a lot of water. Gotcha. Because your heart is beating so fucking fast and you're just your temperature is like over. Okay. So you're hot as okay. fuck, you're sweating your ass off. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's a big part of it. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Uh so this a little bit about raves. Uh raves did come from the UK. Uh so according to vocal dot media, house, acid house, and techno served as a way to cope with the crushing nature of free markets. Oh. Tandem movements took place in both Chicago and Detroit. Oh, fucking uh, got to give Chicago and Detroit uh, massive uh, credit for house music. Uh, that's another bell. Uh, that's four, sorry. Uh, musicians tinkered around with Roland TV-303s and drum machines to create sounds of that the world was hungry for. This had Chica- to be a rave in the 90s. It is. Chicagoites Larry Heard, Carrie Chandler, and Frankie Knuckles were heavily influenced by the likes of disco and, ha- and soul music, and they eventually created a sound culminating a genre yeah, known, see, it as like that. known as house music. While Detroit natives Derek May and Juan Atkins and Kevin Saunderson created, used the creative genius of craft work as their springboard to express what it meant to live in, in a rust belt city. So, uh, good times, but... At the end of the day, it's all about four to the floor. Oh, my God. Singer bro, you're making me feel old. He wasn't old enough at that time, but the 90s raves sound awesome. I wasn't <laughs> old enough either. It's because we were, you know. Yeah, you too. We were right my under God. the fucking. God damn, I spilled beer all over my shirt. I mean, I guess I also didn't go to a 90s rave. I, I went guys, to a two thousand ra- a two thousand one rave, I guess. Yeah, but even then, I, I didn't mean, really get. Right. I didn't get raving until I, I went was two thousand one rave. Ten. But now everyone knows how old I am. I'm. You're only a little bit older than me. But I like, mean, it's okay. I did post it on Twitter, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> like, um, yeah. So two thousand one hey, rave is when I. What up, did. young person? I see Pizza Man saying so, in the chat. You know. Uh. Yeah, I, so but I pulled a lot of articles talking about the history of raves and all that fun stuff. Oh, um, he has some sort of mouthpiece. Yeah, oh, Asians love raves, by the way. So you'll see a lot of Asians there. It's true. Okay, instead like, of just watching this video, why don't you keep talking? Like, you're, you're on a podcast. I'm sorry, I'm you're sorry. not fucking watching but TV. Yeah, so Asians love It's just love a raves. background. Please. Let's, okay, so we, we did. Please um, get back into oh, the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, and menthol. Yeah, that's why we had the sticks. No, no, no. Okay, the so. The mix, like, you know. When you're rolling, dude, menthol and mint is like Arctic wind from mm-hmm. fucking, like, from yeah. fucking yeah, Valhalla, yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's absolutely true, and it's great. Yeah. So just so you guys know that. But I mean, oh, see, know? there's some there's some light show stuff in the background there. You yeah. Got this guy, dude. That's that's just those are just fucking glow sticks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that. I'm an old I'm an right, old semi raver. So we so I know that that was my first light show was with a this it is was with a this is Thunderdome 1997. So just let it play. You don't need to watch it. Uh, okay, so anyway, so Raven's fun, man. It's all about listening to electronic music and dancing around. And you don't need to be fucked up on drugs. You could drink, too. and you know. Yeah, and, no, and, the and last rave that we went to together when we went to the last EDC, I just got drunk and I had a good time. So... Yeah, that's and all you really need. Like, to be honest, like I could enjoy a good light show and a good massage even when I'm drunk. God. I don't have to be like a Molly for that. No, but if you were, you'd be like, oh, shit. But I know, I like, know. Oh, it would be damn, like, dude. it would be like. It'd be like a fucking uh, uh, squish mat low. Is yeah, I know, massage. I know. <laughs> it, like, everyone says it would be like really, 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 really awesome. But at the end of the day, a rave is all about the music. Like, if the music isn't there. Like, look, 
If you went to a rave and it was just flashing lights and people rubbing each other, it's not a rave. That's I'm sorry. just an orgy. Yeah, exactly my point. That's just so a straight music, up orgy. Music is is the core of everything. Yeah, like, it needs yeah, to be yeah, there. No, it, I needs, agree. it literally I agree. is like the heart, the bleeding heart of everything. Um, Jesus, I I yes, forgot about so many of these have, music, these songs I made. To, Listen, like, all these have good music. You're right. So you know, like, damn. I mean, but music sets the whole scene for it. That's why. Like, well, if that's the music it. Wasn't it's part there, of it. You're not gonna want to do all this stuff. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need the music. You need so the music. We need to talk about the music a little bit. So, in the '90s, there was a lot of great genres out there. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna just start listing genres. Nowadays. There's still the same genres, but then there's more genres that are kind of offshoots from other genres. Uh, but, like, essentially, there's just so much electronic music out there to listen to. And nowadays, like, it's <laughs> it was it was underground back in the day, and now it's not. And that's why it's so, like, fucking popular. It's even to the point where, like, pop music is electronic music. Like, yeah. if you listen to any Dua Lipa song. Who's one of the biggest pop stars of the world? Every fucking song is a dance song. Every single one. All of them. Even the fucking Elton John song. That's a house song. I mean, it's so popular now that at this EDC, um, Jaws brought out Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was you there. See what I mean? So you know. But. Anyways, but okay. As we are, as Jacob is peeing, one of the things that like. I did love about like, you know, these things is like, you know, the fashion I'm into. If you know me, I, I love fashion. So rave fashion is a whole different animal. You know what I mean? Like back in the nineties, when it first started, we all know it was like, like the girls who are the tight tops, big pants, you know, like sometimes there were whale tails going on. And, you know, that was a thing. We did that. And then now it's evolved to, like, basically, like, women's outfits could be in a Ziploc bag. You know? It's just straight up, like, you know, pasty or, like, you know, underwear. And guys just wear, like, really cool psychedelic stuff. Or sometimes they, like, try to match with, like, their partner or whatever. Or or no shirts. Like, no shirts is also accept acceptable. Yes, fluffy boots. That was, like, a thing. I think that fluffy boots are making a comeback like in this like now because I did see some like when I was looking at when I was watching the EDC streams. So, you know, I did see the fluffy boots coming back, which which I like, you know, I mean, let's let's bring it back, you know. But yeah, but now like ladies just wear like practically nothing, which is OK. I like that, you know. Because you're doing drugs, you're going to overheat. You might as well just, like, wear the least clothes possible. You know? Just be safe and everything like that. So, but, yeah. So, I was talking with my nail lady about it because, you know, she goes to EDC all the time. And she needed to find an outfit. And we were talking about it. And a lot of her outfits were very, like, you know, just, like, a tie over her boobs with, like, maybe some chaps. And some like, you know, you know, like underwear or something that matched her top. But yeah. Right. You know, I, but I feel drinks. like it's more of a complication for ladies. Like guys could just take their shirts off. It's so easy for you guys. I mean, girl, shirts and a know, Speedo or something would la work. Ladies can just take their shirts off, too, if they really wanted to. You know what I mean? But they can't. Unless they could, <laughs> if, but they have to have like pasties on because they have to cover their nipples or else they would get kicked out. Yeah, that's dumb, man. Why are you kicking out titties? You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. That's, that's what would happen. I'm sorry. All right, let me take these two drinks. That's what would happen. So, but yeah. But we were talking about rave. We were talk I was talking <laughs> to my friend about rave, rave fashion. You know what I mean? Um, because see, like, as you can see here, this is the 90s. This is this was rave fashion before, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. But it's not like that now. Like, it's a whole thing. Like, they even uh, have, yeah, like... Yeah, it's like... It's like a... It is a genre in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rave, rave fashion. But, like, back in the day, it was, like, just wear, wear what 
we what you want like express yourself like yeah. fully express yourself like there's not one dance to do there's not one type of clothing to wear yeah there's not one vibe but i feel like, like that's it's like how it is still now but then most of it is very like because ladies used to always have to be covered up so now ladies just like do not want to be covered up no which is great like, so I, that's I, how I we like express wi- ourselves we're just like what, what naked, tr- half naked all the time what i'm trying to say is about men specifically like like the guy it's like okay if you're if you're a dude you're a bro you need to go show up in your tank top and your hat and your sunglasses but even you know in, what i mean so why don't and you that's like every fucking guy like would every, you wear that's a tank the top po- no that's i'm just saying that's the popular thing to do right yeah. but it's like i don't know man it's like look at you look at this and it's like wow it's like Everybody's kind of doing their own thing, and that's what I sort of like about, about about the classic rave scene is that it's it's free. It's like free, whereas nowadays it's more of just like festival culture is a thing where it's like, yeah. oh, you need to put on a fucking Indian headdress, which is no, that's old and now. <laughs> that used to be, and yeah, that I mean, was Coachella. Coachella no, did that. No, but it's that. still it's it's still in the same box. That's the problem. But with no all one this. at EDC wore a Indian headdress. You said, it, you said the word. I never saw someone wear that. Okay, fair enough. But I'm just trying to say that, like, there's just this overlap of festival culture. But, like, raving isn't that. You know what I mean? I've seen a lot of... Yeah, true. True, singer, bro. Anyway, point is, festival, like, rave, rave, uh, true ravers will wear rave clothes. And there's a difference between a festival goer and a raver, right? Yeah. Whereas, like, EDC is sort of that fusion of raver slash rave. Uh, excuse me. Ra- rave slash festival. Where it's like, you know, there might be some fishes out of water. But, like, if you go to Life is Beautiful, there's, like, there's some ravers there. There's some festival people there. And there's yeah. just, like, there's all the regular people there, too. But, like, but this is what I like about going to events like EDC. Um, it's a rave. It truly is. It's dusk till dawn, right? It's 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., essentially. I only made and it it's just there fucking that crazy. very first time it's I great. went to. It's all the electronic music The very first time, time I went to EDC was the only time I made it from <laughs> dusk till dawn. And that was the most amazing experience that I've ever had. But... Man, I'm listening to all these really old songs I made from like 2013 to 2015. Yeah. Yes, singer bro, you do need to go. Maybe, maybe we should all plan to go in 2023. Ooh, I'd be so down. We could all meet up, you know, at EDC and then, you know, have a good time. We'll bring the drugs. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Look, at the We're end not of the day, do that. at the end of the day, raving is is like you show up to dance and listen to mm-hmm. sick music all yeah. night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you're in that mind space, cool. And it, you're also supposed to do like even in the metal world, the same type of thing where it's like it's not about like hate or conflict or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, pride. It's all about like plur. Right? It's all about fucking peace, love, unity, respect. It's all about yeah, showing up, being cool, respecting the people there, and helping out uh, some people in need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Doing the right thing, but also enjoying yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? And, yeah. like, what that meant for me was always, like, taking care of my group, which was always a massive group. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell everyone, like, if you're thinking about doing any drugs, you should do it with Jacob. Do it with Jacob first because yeah, he's always a good, do drugs with Jacob. <laughs> he's a good, yeah. He's a good Jacob is. Do a, not put that on my resume. Like Jacob <laughs> is a good shepherd for your drug experience for the very first time. He's really he's he's really good at it. He yeah, like I forgot it, about this like, song too. Of anything, like he's selfish most of the time, but when you're doing drugs with him, he's the most unselfish person in the whole entire world. Oh yeah, I take care of everyone. He else. will take care of you before he takes care of himself. He will make sure you are having a good time before he is having a good time. That's so, true. Um, yeah. Oh oh <laughs> dude. So if anyone was thinking about doing any drugs and you haven't done it before, do it with Jacob. 
because Dude, he's speaking, a, speaking of which and i'm not just saying that because like you know we're together i'm saying that no nah, you know real. she's gonna be the most critical person of me yeah. of all time Dude, yeah absolutely. i'm the most critical person of why him. would she ever fucking you know in yeah. favor of my you know who i am yeah so like you know I mean? he so she's, like, she's gonna require it. more out of me than yes. other people so take it take it for what it is but yeah. anyway um, that being said, uh, I was actually, t- uh, so if, if you've watched the show before, you know who Luke shot first is, um, I, we were chatting on Twitter earlier and we were talking about like, Oh, what's your rave name? Mochi. Do you know anything about rave names? No. What's a rave name? So you, or you could call it like, you know, whatever. I mean, it's basically a rave name. I, I guess that's the word. Is for it. this like a fake name? But you tell people what you're No, it's like your code them? name. It's your code name. Oh. So like essentially... <laughs> Within the circles of raving or whatever, it's like usually a, a rave mom who gives you the rave name. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just, you I know, mean, you're looking, looking back on it, it's kind of so funny. So you're going to have to tell but, me. So like a rave name is basically a nickname that you get from your rave group based on like how you are. Okay, so when you don't raving. give yourself the name. You you're, can't. Okay. No, there's no okay. way in hell. Okay. You cannot be like, I'm Shadow. Okay. No, you know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> I mean, and who the fuck would say Shadow? It's, n- it's, not like, it's not like the Matrix where you're like, okay. I gave myself the name Okay, Neo. so someone you know else I mean? has to give. It's not like that. So it's like, 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 oh, I called you. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example, right? Uh, there was this one kid. We called him Lufa. And that's because when he would do drugs... He would do. He would rub himself all night. He'd be like this. Okay, so what? What, what rave? Right, we like. Oh, we we'll call him Lufa because all he does is like. He's okay, so what rave a shower. name do you have? <laughs> Did someone give you a rave so name? So the thing is, that's the thing. Okay. What's your with rave me, name? With me, with me, I'm gonna tell the story. Okay, with me, it's like I was wanting a rave name, but like people didn't. It just didn't come naturally, and so then. Uh, I would always give light shows, and when I give light shows, it's, like, really fast, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, and, and crazy, true, he does right? always give light shows, though. So. And I could give you a light show right fucking now if, if you wanted. I still have my gloves and stuff. But uh, that's one of the things. So I was giving, uh, like, a friend at the time a light show, and he was like, whoa, why don't we call you Disney, bro? Because your light shows are like a roller coaster. So your name is Disney. No, it's not. Because that's that, what he no, literally said. No, it's just one kid who said that, and I was like, kind of, you know, like, oh, that's kind of cool. But the real rave name that was given to me, it was given to me by one of my best friends, uh, who used to be on this podcast. Oh, Kevin. He used to call me the Godfather. Did he though? Yes. Because I feel like yes, yes. Because you gotta talk to you gotta talk to Kevin because every time I tell him, every time you use the Godfather, he always like no. Says honestly, he it's never because gave you that. it's because number one, yes, I'm the Godfather of his child. Okay, that is true. Even That's though I'm true. not a Catholic, I still faked to pretend like I was a Catholic to become a tr- actually recognized Godfather in the Catholic yes. Church. Yes. Number two, it's because I would throw all the parties and take care of everyone. Okay, I see that. The That's Godfather. Real. And okay, so, like, fine. there was a specific night where I had a whole house full of people, and they all called me the Godfather, and it was like, a, there was, like, a moment. Where they're like, you're the Godfather, and it was, like, really cool. Okay, so you're so the Godfather. So that's basically my rave name. W- okay. But I don't know. I don't know if it, it didn't really stick after that. It was just, like, one night. So, like, basically, I don't have a rave name. I never okay. really had a rave so name. Was but only a one night I was also always the DJ, and my DJ name was Om Jesus, which is my gamer name. So maybe you should be called the Chameleon. Because <laughs> I was never, I never had an identity. Because maybe, yeah, because you did the Godfather <laughs> thing and you did the. But it's like everyone, you know, like I, I like. And Luke, you did the DJ so thing. So Luke, Luke shot first on Twitter said his was Spectrum. Like they called him Spectrum. Spectrum. You Why? Know, every, I don't know. I don't really know the story. We'll have to pick his brain on that one. We're going to have to ask you, Luke Shot, first. Like, <laughs> like just s- putting it out there. Yeah, Singer Bro says, I like Disney. Yeah, no, that would have been an okay you know, one. Because we, but I'm not really a Spectrum? Disney person. But again, at the same time, I like, 
like the fact that someone was like, your light shows are like a roller coaster. I'll call you Disney. That's he a was very all over the place. I mean, that's believe very... it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know him personally, but Spectrum does give that sense of how he maybe. was all over yeah. the place. Yeah, which which makes sense. But that's really where these nicknames come from. So anyway, okay, you're okay, like, if I was okay. to give you a rave name, I don't know because I never rolled with you. Yeah, because we never rolled together. But if I was to think, I would call you Scatter. Oh, just because of the time we did mushrooms together, <laughs> you're fucked up. Well, fine. Bec- no, I because mean, I'm okay with that. Because Scatter is fine. Yeah, I would call you Scatter. Because Scatter you're, is, like, totally fine. Because you just start to, like, talk and not... you Like, here's the thing about Mochi Squeeze. She's very reserved. Yeah. But you know what I mean? In the, in the moment, when she loses control... All she does is talk and talk and talk and say every thought in her fucking brain. Yeah, and there's a lot and of shit happening. And then it's like, whoa, happening. bro. It's there's like, whoa. There's a lot of shit I'll happening call you in this brain. Next year. Yes. And that's a good name. We should sing a bro. I'm telling you right yeah, now. Yeah, that would be great. If yeah. you are down, we should all meet. This is going to be cheesy. I'm going to say it right <laughs> now. But we should all meet under the electric sky. We oh, should okay. totally cute. just that's all really cute. do EDC. Yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down. That's by the, the way, only way I'd be down if we way, were all going to meet up at b- EDC. By the way, I hope you're liking the music because, you know, all these songs I've made at some point in my life. But, yeah. So, and then we can make all, we can make nicknames for each other. Maybe that will be the day. No, no. No, we got to nah, do Molly the only way, Yeah, that. the only way that you can actually have a rave name Yikes. is if we're all rolling. That's just how it goes. And I would be down to roll, but we would have to like do Molly before that, because you know. <laughs> you no, know that's me. true. That's true. But anyway, so raving, right? Good times. Uh, it's all about hanging out. It's all about yeah being as free as possible. Like when you're rolling, you feel free. Like you want to say all the things on your mind with no consequence. Okay. You're basically like a child. Um. You know, that's what it's all about. And, like, that's sort of a big part of raving, too, is that it's like, you know what? I'm just going to dance like no one's watching. No one's going to uh, judge you. Yeah. If people are judging you at a rave, they should not fucking be there. Yeah. That's true. a big part of Plur. And that's sort of the problem with EDC these days is that it's like it's a big fucking fashion show. It's a big popularity contest. Don't call it a fashion show. It's a bunch of it, you dumb mean fuckers. there's a bunch of bros there. No, but I'm just saying there's just like a lot to it that shouldn't be there. It should it should be about coming together, listening to the tracks, and look at this chick. Look at how she's dancing. Just do whatever. Just fucking have a yeah, good time. Yeah, you could just Who do whatever. Who cares if you can't shuffle? It doesn't matter. You know I mean? It doesn't shit. matter. But that's what I mean. When we go to when we go to raves, that's how it is for me. Like I'm not judging anyone. I'm not doing anything. Like I just want to be around people that want to have fun too yeah man and that's what it's that's what about, it's about right just have a good time with people and don't judge them yeah it's just some people are so fucked up sometimes yeah but you I, know we just ignore those i just people. hate it yeah i hate it we that's just ignore i mean those people. and that i extend that within everything like even like because you know i'm into video games and stuff and it's like there's so many console warriors out there who are like oh just because you like xbox you're a piece of shit this is my console's better and it's like what the fuck man it's like whatever you do in the world why does it matter what you're into or like what it is like unless you're a fucking monster you know what i mean like you shouldn't be a murderer you know what i mean but like just because you like i mean even then doesn't make you a fucking asshole i'm gonna tell you you know what i mean like like, come on man i'm gonna tell you even if you like told me you were a murderer i wouldn't even judge you just yet i would ask you like well why did you murder that person like i would (laughs) literally like seriously i would just i wouldn't really quickly judge you i would be like well why did you commit murder you know and then like i would want to just know yeah. Like, because I will tell you, there are a lot of, um, in the line of work that I do, there are a lot of people that I see that have, that are questionable. But I never, like, really judge them on, um, on what I see for face value. I always want to know, uh-huh. well, wh- is there, was there a reason? Is there a thing? Like, so. 
I'm going to tell you, like, out of everyone in the whole entire world, I probably am the most, like, I mean, not in the whole entire world. I mean, you know, there's Gandhi and stuff. But, like, <laughs> I mean, in my group, I probably will, like, judge you the least. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Because I want to understand you more, and then I will pass my judgment. <laughs> like, you could say you murdered someone. You could even say, like, you say anything. We're all sweaty, that why. guy is. But, so, yes. I wish everyone was like that at rape, but not everybody is. Well, but that's, that's kind of the thing. And that's sort of the thought virus I want to put in your head. Is that, like, look. EDC is, like, the biggest fucking rave in the world. And it's everywhere. It's not just Las Vegas. Like, it's everywhere. It's all over the world. They have all, multiple events throughout the year, right? And those yeah, are massive. they have EDC London. They have EDC... Um, You're saying the word over and over again. Yeah, Mexico. Everywhere. There's a Mexico. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a few different ones in uh, America as well. But here's the thing. But they do say that the one in Vegas is the main one and the biggest. It is the biggest and main one. Absolutely. It's the one you want to go to, and that's why it's really expensive. But does that mean that you can't go to a local rave that's not recognized throughout the world and experience the true rave culture? Oh, I probably. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. I probably that's think you where would, you want to like, go. Look yeah. at look at this that's video. That's where you want to go. You see this you video? Probably would Sweaty get fuckers the... everywhere. That's what you yeah. want. You that's probably you would want. get the you, if you did the underground stuff and not did the mainstream stuff. You probably would get the culture more. Yeah. Um, because those the people that are underground are the ones that are doing it for real. Are have been doing it for ages and just you know are are still trying to keep it alive. The mainstream stuff like. Sometimes it gets twisted because of the people that because it's mainstream, you know. Right. Everybody's just like doing it, but. Well, this video broke. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's gonna come back. Um. Yeah. No. I, that's then. That's sort of the thing, man. It's like. So here's my advice to you, man. Just. Wait, you can't do advice. Are we doing twenty-five cent advice? No, no. This is just advice. I'm just saying, like. If you really want to know what a rave is, like, you don't need to spend a bunch of money. Like, it might cost 20 bucks. Just find, like, your local electronic event and just go to it. You don't know what be I mean? scared, like, dude. One of, like, one of the things, like, if you remember my buddy Keenan, remember that guy from way back in the day when he was, Keegan? like, not even 21? Yeah. Yeah, Ke Keegan. That's what I said. Uh, he's still doing nickel fucking beer night downtown. To this day, he'll still play shows. Okay, there. and I'm cool with that, and I love Keegan when I met him the first time, but then every time I follow him more, like, right. I feel like he's turned into a porter. <laughs> well, you, I mean, he might look like Porter Robinson, but, you know, is what it is. But he acts like a porter. I mean, but, you know, like, that's just his vibe, man. I don't know. So but if I'm I just saying, that's Keegan in the streets right now. And I said, hey, bro, remember right that now time you're we acting got really judgy. drunk together? Right now you're acting judgy. Have you talked to him? T technically, like, every once in a while we tweet at each other. Have you talked to him lately? All I'm trying to say is that the local scene is still alive. We'll go to Nickel Fucking Beer Night to see him. Nickel Fucking Beer Night in Vegas is a big in downtown. Thing. Let me explain what it is. Downtown, you go to this place. You go down. You go to this place, and the beers are a nickel, but really it's a dollar. Really, it's a dollar, but um, still. Yeah, but I like the little small ass venue, and they get like bands in there and stuff. But apparently, they also have DJs and stuff, and that's cool too. Yeah. We did so, a Halloween. Yeah. They did a Halloween. Uh, what's event. a porter? A porter is Porter Robinson. Yeah, Porter so Robinson. Just look Check up him who out. Porter Robinson is. If you don't know about Porter Robinson, you should. You should listen to his music. He's great. Worlds was a great album, yeah. and, you know, no. whatever. I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, Porter Robinson is good. I love his music, but him, in general, he's like... He's, he's kind of a pinky-up guy. Yeah, he's very, like... And his fans are very, very like, and, you know... And his fans are very, like... It's like, think think uh, K-pop fans. His fans are very protective and will, like, mm -hmm. kick your ass. He, they're like T-Swift fans. Right, like, yeah, pinky up. Yeah, like if you say any any bad shit about him, they will kick your ass. 
so like. Yeah, let make you feel like you're an asshole. Just to be careful. Okay, so just let's talk a l- tiny bit about EDC cult uh, history. Cheers. I like this guy. See, look, he's just vibing out. That's what I'm saying with these, with these, this video. It's just old school. Like it's all raw. Like raving should be about just doing what you want to do and have a good time. You know, it's I'm just surprised. like surprised every time I meet people. Like I'm surprised when people say they they do like raves because I never really pegged them to be a raver. Rave, you can never peg down a raver ever, because a raver will always. You know what I mean? Like, it's always someone who's normal, but then when they rave, they're like, hey, man, this is me. I'm going to do my thing. You know what I mean? It's time to release myself from life. Uh, Right now, we're listening to my as fuck as AP. This is, like, the most... But okay, I mean, like, like for so, example, okay. I don't know Singer Bro that well, but I never pegged him to be like into like this music. Oh yeah, that's one of the first things we talked about. I thought he would be like into like he's um, a mu- metal he's a, or he's something. He's a music guy. Well, but that, but what's wrong with that? You can like anything and everything. You know what I mean? You could no, be I a mean, metal like, guy. I didn't think that he, he could would, also be a raver. I didn't you think he I mean? would like electronic music. I thought it was just metal. This is my thing. That's the thing. People don't just like a thing. They can like everything. That, that's all. So anyway, I, you know, here's a little bit about. Shame on me. I mean, exactly. What, shame on you. Yeah. But people should not be put in a box. I mean, I'm sure when people look at me, they think, oh, Asian. she probably just likes R and B. I don't know. No one. Uh, I don't. That's the thing. It's like, who's do? Who do you think is thinking things? People shouldn't be thinking things about things or making assumptions about anyone. No, but people, That's yeah, no it's point. human nature That's to what judge. I'm saying. People are, people do like kind of make a judgment when they see People you. should not do that. That's, that's my, my, my world is about, you don't know shit about me. I don't know shit about you until we talk about it. Okay, but are you trying to tell me that you never judge people? I mean, I do to some okay. extent. Okay. So I say, judge you by you how you drive, but I don't know how what music you listen to just because of the way you, you drive. Don't judge someone for how for when you see like, like I mean, and it's human nature, just like Singer Bro says. No, what nature, I'm trying to say to you is that if you really want peace, love, unity, and respect, it's time to back the fuck up, put your s- thoughts to the side, and just accept. It's all about acceptance. Accept and let people be, and let them be, and only judge them for their actions. Okay. Is that not fair? That is a completely fair. All right. So here's the history of EDC. Before we end this fucking episode. Okay. At the age of 17, Rotella hosts his first event in LA called Unity Groove. The party featured DJs Steve Loria and Sean Perry. Don't know them. 93, Insomniac gets its official start in October 93 with the first Insomniac underground event taking place in a warehouse in South Central LA. 95, the first ever Nocturnal Wonderland is held, which has become Insomniac's longest running festival brand. Wow. Yeah, even but he didn't than even do EDC. Oh, God, look, some other fucking shit has happened here. He did EDC with a partner, and then the partner left, and then he yeah, bought the Yeah, it's the, the guy. Name. It's the guy. Fucking Rotella. Insomniac's other signature event, Electric Daisy Carnival, debuts at the Shrine Expo Hall in L.A. in 97. 2000. Over the years. There was years, a flyer for that. Nocturnal Wonderland has been held in a number of different locations, locations including empire polo field in 2000 where record setting to 40,000 people attended uh hold on let me just put this in here and we could just go through it as a group are you other website this is insomniac.com 2001 edc travels outside california for the first time with the inaugural edition of edc texas at the you have to stop Thunder Hill always Raceway saying that I'm going to tell you right Austin. now because we're going to be like way, 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 way too drunk. So. Uh, and then it just keeps going. Look at all these years. I know. See? 2010, EDC welcomes its biggest crowd in L.A. with up to 185,000 people. Yeah, someone people died. Over two days at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum in Eposition Park. 
Okay, which is question. Where, that's I was there. Okay, I was a question. There. So that event was all ages, but is it all ages now? Eighteen and over. Eighteen and over now. Okay. 2011 Electric Daisy Carnival moves to from LA to Vegas. The three-day festival have infused more than 1.5 billion dollars into Clark County. True. That's why we always have it here. And then the rest is uh, history, essentially. Guess what? We. This shit is hard as fuck. But they like um. It's because after that shit happened, they were kind of like strict about it, but not really. I think they just have more medics now out there. Which is good. Which is better. So, you know. But, okay. What do you think about this song, Mochi? I like it. I mean, I feel like this is how all our podcasts should be. Like, you should make music so we could have music when we do our podcast. No, I know, but it'll be way more chill than this music. This music is crazy. Anyways, I will say that like I made I made all these songs you're listening to tonight. Interesting. Every one. But okay, so so um, anyway, so that's you know I don't know, but that's raving, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, what else should we say? What else you got? I think we should all rave. What together. about candy bracelets? Oh, candy! Yeah, I have a bunch. Well, explain what that is. Candy is like bracelets or necklaces that you make and you like trade it with people, I guess. So. Okay. So what do you make the bracelets out of? Beads. There you go. Thank you. And it's always It's a bead necklace you made out of little plastic charms and, and, and beads and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you could also put like little uh, little letters on there. Yeah. We actually have a bunch here, and we have like we have a ton of candy necklaces from her and me, yeah. as well as well as the, yeah, uh, the in them. physical beads and stuff. And yeah, I, I mean, mean like I made, I made, I made a, <laughs> I made a candy, I, I made a candy, candy. Fuck, I can't talk. I'm drunk. A candy bracelet. It was all yellow, but it just had the letters PP on it. Oh yeah. What do you think about that? I don't know what that means. Pee pee. Oh, you're disgusting. I mean, a pee pee bracelet. <laughs> you're gross. <laughs> that was funny. It was just all yellow all the way around, and then it just has the letters pee pee. Nice. Pee pee bracelet. And then uh, typically I would make bracelets that were like yeah, you, you know, like in a, you know like a music group or you know DJ yeah. or whatever. Or I would make one specific for, like, a friend. Oh, this is the best track yeah. I ever made, by the way. But, you know, like, we did do that. I like making some. time for this some. episode to end soon. But I feel like it was, like, awesome when people, like, traded it with you because you had... It was kind of like a memory, you know? You had a piece of that person because... Right, right, and... You know, if you want to talk about the whole player thing, like, what was it? You know how to do it? I should do it. No, because I never traded Peace. candy like that. So this is what you do. Remember, I like, okay, well, I was from the genre where sure. you're just like, here. Sure. Err. Mochi, mochi. We're, okay, so before we end this episode. Yeah, it's peace. No, no, I'm going to just show you right now. Peace. Peace. Love. Love. When you look at the side, it's a half heart, yeah. right? So you, you attach. Uh-huh. So peace, peace love, love, unity, unity, respect. respect. And then what you do is you then and then you grab slide each it other. Out, yeah. No, you you grab each other's hands. And then they slide then the you, candy onto I you. I slide the I slide the candy onto your arm, and you slide the. Candy okay, so mine. I don't understand if like you're gonna exchange like the the big necklaces. How do you do that? Do you no, still that's do the different. piece or do you know. do the do you necklace? Touch, do you there's touch no, foreheads and there's then you no, like do the There's thing? no candy necklace. It's always a candy what are you about? There's always like You don't exchange those, dude. What are you talking about? Oh, you about? don't exchange those. No, it's just the bracelets. Only dude. the what, bracelets. What is a fucking candy necklace? What are you talking about? You know the thing where they like sometimes people have uh. the 
Have no. the beads with the, no. like, the Yoshi Stop. on it. Stop. Stop. That's Perlers. Okay. You don't trade that shit. You don't trade your Perlers? You Are you never, sure? You never okay. fucking Fine. trade Perlers. Ever. Know. Just bracelets. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> I don't know. What if you did? I'm telling you no, you don't. So you no one don't. exchanges Perlers? No. No? That's not Fine. a thing. Okay. You don't trade that. You just trade cheap bracelets. But what if you want to give someone your perler? Then you just give it to them. You say peace, love, you know, respect, and then you just give uh, it to them. I feel oh. like you guys should touch foreheads. Uh, you know, you're coming off like not a raver. Why? That's what's happening right now. What if I start a new trend of ravers, and I, I say I make a perler, and then, then you're I gonna say Then you're going to go ahead and do it, and I don't know anything about that. That's a whole new and thing. We're gonna have, why are you embarrassed? I should be able to do whatever I want because it's peace, love, unity, and whatever, so they should respect my customs. Peace, love, and you're going to just make up your own shit. Let's look at some old uh, flyers. Look at this. What do you think <laughs> of this rave flyer? What do you think of this ray flare? I like it. What about this one? That's weird. I like it. What about that one? Okay. What about this one? Uh, that probably would be a good rave though. <laughs> what about that one? Uh, scary. What about that one? Uh, weird. What about that one? I like that one. This one looks like a rave right here. Shoom, that does shoom look like a rave. This one, Spectrum Heaven Earth. That's okay. good. Ooh, look at Ooh, that one with scary. the egg on it. Know. That's creepy. Rave World. That's uh, it. Not sure. No, that's it. That's it, guys. That's it. That's All it. right. Well, that's it for the episode. We love you. Um, we're gonna do our Whatever. twenty-five cent advice. You can't just end it. We're gonna like, do our twenty-five that's cent. That's it. Advice. It's over. You can't just do that. No, we're doing our 25 cent advice. Our 25 cent advice okay, put is this on like, on, you so. know, really awesome advice <laughs> that is <laughs> worth just I'm sorry. I'm just minutes. drunk. I'm just drunk and I'm acting. So, the guys, my advice you. is that, like, when you go to these <laughs> raves, just. Love everybody. <laughs> Don't judge. Just go into it and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accept people for who they are. No matter what your brain tries to tell you. Just fuck your brain and just just you know. How do you do fuck it. your how do you fuck your you own know? brain? Just like turn it off and just do whatever. Do you just put your dick you in know? your own brain? How's that work? But that is my twenty fifth cent advice. Jacob uh, I just want to call out Singer Bros uh, 25 Cent Advice, which is just dance and have fun. That's yes, a great one. that's a good one. Here's my 25 Cent Advice to you for raving. Um, show up as a clean slate, open to anything. Never sacrifice your ideals and who you are for others, of course. You know, don't be taken advantage of, of course. Uh, but, uh, surround yourself with people you trust at a rave yes. and then have a fucking good time, man, because those people that you trust, that you truly know that you can trust will take care of you. Um, and you know, honestly, like even if you're not, a, you're trying to even go to a rave or whatever and just listen to this episode or whatever, listen to electronic music. It's a, it's, it's great, you know, it's, it's the root of everything and, and honestly it's, it's worth, it's worth listening to. Yeah. So give the music a chance is my biggest part of it. But you give the music a chance and take care of yourself. Yes. Tell me finally send advice that you're getting free right there. Okay. All right, so guys. Jacob's gonna pour the Huda Gras shot. This is one of my f the favorite my favorite tracks I ever made. Right I'm here, not way. gonna take the Huda Gras shot. I'm gonna chug my Truly instead. I have half this Truly. Here, carry it. See. Okay, fine. You know what we'll do? We're gonna switch up the tradition this time. I'll chug the rest of my beer. No, let me see how much you have compared to mine. Hold it. 
No, that's bullshit. See, carry mine. No, you have way more than I do. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that's like fucking. See, Singer Bro said he'll also chug. <laughs> Okay, I got four more. Yeah, because Jacob only has like a fourth of his beer. Like, not even a little bit. Ready? Okay. No, no, fine. Just chug your beer. Ready? There, that's it. And then chug your beer. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna chug. I like it. I like it. Okay, ready? So for a Huda Gras shot, we're all gonna chug our shit. So singer bro, oh, chug right. your shit. I'm gonna chug you my shit. <clears throat> well, you know, as always, I'll say, hope you like the music. That's all my music. Why don't you play like since the we're just out real quick? You can't play one of your remixes. Just no, I can't because those get flagged. Oh uh, fuck! I don't own the rights to the samples, but. If y'all want to come to a DJ set that I'll do uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, I'll play all the tracks, including the remixes, okay, which ready? are good. So uh, here we go. Let me okay. play the outro to the show. Okay, ready? We're going to chug it. So uh, thanks for being a part of this episode. This yes. is chaotic madness, but Braves are fun. Braves and are cheers fun. Cheers to you. Cheers. Hoot de gras. Hoot de gras, which means live, laugh, live, and drink. Drink with us and uh, come back again for another episode. We love you. And here's a sip of this. I'm going to chug the rest of my drink as well. Okay, I try to chug it. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Damn, that's so hard to choke down, dude. Did it. Fuck. I had to take a break to do the burp situation. You know what? Like We'll see you next week, and uh, I think yes. it's, uh, we're going to get some burgers. Yes. We love you, and thank you for watching. Deuces.